Hello everyone, it's me Khan from Seaphone Game, back again to do another Unscripted Memories. So you may notice a bit of a weird episode change when I upload the next episode after this, which is to be the first major part of my Pokemon anime retrospective. It's all filmed, just needs lots and lots of editing because he knows Unscripted, I am adding some extra stuff and whatnot for clarification purposes in a nice cameo I got years ago for the very reason. And because that's taking a while and also my full-time job and having not much time to write scripts, the total memories is also slow too. But I am getting a lot of gameplay footage recorded, so at least hopefully I'll be at a bit of a consistent pace if I nail it just right. So in the meantime, let's just do an unscripted memories on something that I like to do every year, if possible, and that's E3. Lastly, I did all those weird summer gaming conferences that were like all over the place, and you know, I enlisted one of them because of weird nerds which we're going to have to talk about today, so that'll be fun. I still had mostly fun, even though it was a bit disjointed, going from one to another to another and making multiple videos. Today, it's E3, so I'm going to do it all in one video, like they did. And even though there's technically some things that happened around that time that I could do known videos, like the Xbox post E3 conference, the Treehouse, and also the Summer Game Fest, I'm just going to do it all in one video, because to be blunt, uh, I don't really care. I just, E3, E3 week, E3 season, all one video. Let's go, share my dots on Y dot of E3. So to kick things off, the Summer Game Fest took place last week. I think it was around the 7th or 8th? No, more, no, the 10th. Okay, the 10th is when it started. At least I remember it starting around then. And let's just be blunt. Nothing in this conference did it for me at all. I literally cared about zero games they announced. If there was a game I care about, they showed off elsewhere, or I forgot about it already, or they I didn't really care about it much to begin with. Though there was one I remembered and was interested in, I kinda am, but I'm mixed because of personal reasons. So uh let's get to that shortly. Shortly, I mean I should. So one of the headliners from Dot Emu was Metal Slug Tactics, which takes the pixel art of Metal Slug and makes it into a 2D tactics game. It seems a bit weird because they did the Metal Slug Tactics, I believe on iOS, just Metal Slug Attack or something, and then they made a game called Metal Slug Tactics for iMold phones in 2008 or so. But no one outside Japan used iMold, so it makes sense why they just use the name, it's a simple name, it works. And it looks really good and promising, and I like the developer team. It has some promising, it has a good composer on it, it has great artists, it has people I've seen and respect in the industry working on it. So the development is great. The publisher is not, and I'll explain why. Because you know I unboxed a lot of SNK stuff, I talked about SNK, I mean, my next episode is on an SNK game, so that makes it kind of awkward to even think about doing it, but... Well, I mean, they're the past SNK, so I guess I can do it, but... Basically... Late November, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia invested in SNK, and it was a 33% stake, which is still a pretty good amount, but not takeover levels. But it was concerning because it was meant to be expanding Saudi Arabia so that people, you know, want to do esports and whatnot. He wants to make an esport paradise. I get it. They're mostly an oil place. They have a bad reputation. Problem is, part of that bad reputation is because the Crown Prince ordered an American journalist assassinated. That's not an opinion, that's not a weird investigation, that's not a conspiracy, that is fact. The FBI and pretty much everyone for Brain found out he was assassinated, he is dead, confirmed to be dead, and the Crown Prince is highly likely to be the one that ordered the hit. I'm gonna keep it short. Basically, having someone like him on SNK makes me very uncomfortable about supporting them as much as I did before because, Jesus Christ, you went from a small company in China named Leiu who people had problems with because, you know, they, or they were in China, but they were a company in China, not the head of China as a company. Meanwhile, the head, the crown prince, is the one owning the company. It's not a company in Saudi Arabia. If it was, I'd be A-OK -okay with that. It was a great fan base for SNK in Saudi Arabia. It had a good arcade scene. But of all people, why a dictator? Why? And from what I heard from a developer friend, it finalized a few months ago, so now they're mostly owned by the crown prince. So therefore, I don't really want to dump money on SNK Mail Slug Tactics because, uh... I don't want to have a CEO who is murders people because they call him out on human rights abuses. That's really 
extreme and feels like I'm in a fever dream. So yeah, the game looks fine. I'll probably check it out if it gets a physical release and I'll get it used or through someone else like Limited One. Or maybe I'll just get it on sale. Or just wait maybe in case someone else buys them. Because it seems like SNK gets bought every few years by someone. Playmore, Leilu, now Crown Prince. What next? Maybe Nintendo will buy them. That'd be weird. Or Hamster. They do a lot of work. Don't they play on as rich? Either way, that was the Summer Game Fest highlight for me. Metal Slug Tactics. Looks cool. Great devs. Publishers iffy. Up next, a bunch of games I don't care about, including one called Elden Wing, which was the big headliner. All I know about is that some dude I've never heard of before in my life, some George guy, made, worked on the world or something and made people excited because I guess he's popular, but I don't know most people like that. I only pay attention to Japanese culture, or even then, old Japanese culture. I don't even know a lot of new stuff, so I just am a very sheltered guy in terms of those kind of preferences, and I don't know who this Martin dude is. And because of that, I don't care about Elden Ring. It's another from software game that's not for you got game heroes. All I know is that after two years, it's finally unveiled. And the most interesting part for me is it comes out right before my birthday. If it doesn't get delayed, that'd be pretty fun. I'd get it, but it doesn't have an easy mode or any sort of practice mode. You know, I don't want to be dumb that easy because, you know, hard games like that Ninja Gaiden Sigma are good. But I, I feel like if I had more practice options, you know, so I can get the hang of stuff by myself before I tackle the real threats, I'd be more open to try it. I have a doubt it hits Game Pass and then I'll try it. Either way, not my thing. That was Summer Game Fest. Jeff Kegley or Geoff Kegley as I always do to pronounce him. I don't care about him, he just exists. That's what I think about him. So let's move on to E3, the real show. Not that weird summer game fest that I guess was more or less a appetizer snack. So first up was Ubisoft. I watched it with me and my friend Paul or Discord. And for the most part, this is honestly gonna sound weird after what I just said about SNK. But I, I don't like Ubisoft. I like them less than SNK because I don't think the CEO's killed anyone, but he has a bad culture of abuse. It's been widely publicized. A bunch of people called out Ubisoft on it, and it's the CEO that's the problem. And instead of firing the CEO, they just kept doing it. People found out they did nothing to change it outside firing people like Ansel and whatnot. So, like, yeah, Ubisoft is a mess, and I don't want to support a company that's a mess. The only company I hate more is Activision. They're my most hated company ever because they make Gun Game McGee 5 million times a year. Though oddly enough, you know, they were at Summer Game Fest. I don't think they've announced a new Call of Duty for this year, which is very unusual, but kind of more of a sense that they are rushing to get something out for November because you can't disobey the gun game machine of the US Army. But yeah, Ubisoft, they do make games I care about, but none of them were there. There was this nice open world sports game that looks interesting in my eye. Buy, and Immortals, I think they mentioned it or showed it off in the pre-show. I still want to get it for Xbox, but I hear there's lots of save bugs and whatnot, and it makes me very, very hesitant. So I'm nervous. And on Switch, I don't even want to bother. It's not even at full frame rate. I'm surprised it's not on Switch at all, if I may be brunt. But that's an okay game. And that age show a bunch of stuff I didn't care about, and stuff that I thought would be interesting to see at a long time, like Skull and Bones and Beyond Good and Evil 2, are just not there. No new Wayman, but I don't care about any Wayman outside the first anyway, so not a bother for me, but kind of surprised, though then again the creator's gone, so who's going to take over? No Prince of Persia remake either. That looks promising, you know, it looked not visually interesting last time we saw it. I do want to play a remake from... It, as much as I hate Ubisoft, I think it's nice that a team in India is making a full-fledged AAA game. Never really hear about that. I want to see what they have to offer, especially if they just need the fan feedback and delayed it so many times just to incorporate all the changes. So hopefully when it comes back, it'll be impressive, and even if it takes till next year, it's fine. Honestly, if I had the original I bought for Series X, so I can just play that and have a new one to compare to later. And then last but not least, the main attraction, Mario Plus Rabbids 2. I still need to beat the first one, got stuck in the desert world. Funny story, I made a Twitter post about it, and the director of the game actually tweeted, did a balance patch and they told me to check it out again. I've been mean to, just been busy. Of all the Ubisoft studios, I think the one that's behind Mario Rabbids at least is hopefully good hearted, but still, with Eve's there, CEO of Ubisoft, I don't like Ubisoft. 
And yeah, Assassin's Creed's getting DLC because at least they're not milking it again. They used to milk it, that was awful. But it doesn't look interesting. I still want to get Odyssey and Origins. Valhalla looks weird and clunky. But yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on Ubisoft. Just clunky, boring. Another company that's controversial I don't want anything to do with besides maybe a few games that I might get later down the line. Mario Rabbids is the highlight. So up next was Xbox. That's the one I watched next with my friend Paul. And this is a big one. I own a Series X now, backwards compatibility man, love collecting, love the sales, love pretty much everything about it in terms of ecosystem. I was just hoping to see some good first party exclusives or maybe some retro ports or just other cool stuff interested in general announced and they did okay but most of the stuff was clearly of course because you know it's Microsoft. It was made for a western AAA market. I'm more of a Japanese gaming market guy so they didn't announce much of aiming from that side of the ocean at all and most of the focus was on Starfields and Bethesda thing I have no idea about. It just looks like space and it's coming out in late 22 so why announce it here? Why not next year? Like the date and everything too. That's weird. So they did that with Starfield and then they did Halo Infinite which they showed off and talked about multiplayer. What you have to give them credit for is that it seems Capture the Flag is in this game and I like Capture the Flag in Timefall 2 and I play that for April Fools. So I might actually just play Capture the Flag and make it a full time not full time because I have a job, but you know, a fun part time thing I do with friends. Who knows? It's free to play, but I'm interested in the campaign. I'm still playing Halo 1 for the first time, which includes funny highlights such as me getting stuck in the first room where you have to look at lights because I have no idea how to aim in first person because I hate first person games. That's how bad I am at that, and that's why I'm only good at Doom because the only aim left to white, what's all Doom? So it'll be interesting to see if I beat the rest of Halo series before Infinite comes out if I'm even interested in Infinite by the time it hits the store shelves. And Game Pass, which is how I'm going to play it, otherwise you wouldn't catch me buying it. So then they talk about Halo, a bunch of the party games, a bunch of Game Pass games, one of which was Lakuza 7, I need to beat Lakuza 0, I need to finish reviewing Lakuza 5 for the website on PS4, and I need to beat Judgment by Judgment and then get Lost Judgment because that's another thing and I also need to buy North Star. Lots of RGG games I'm going to get, but one I am going to buy and beat day one no matter what is in another conference. So we'll go to that a bit later. But yeah, there was nice Game Pass stuff and really just a bunch of random announcements. They also announced a new Forza game. It's just a bunch of cars driving. I honestly don't care. It's not an arcade racer. It's just exploration. Might be fun. It's like we, like... Pilot wings where you like fly around the island, open world, and just go to landmarks and it's fun. If they do that with cars, I'd be in the Forza and may have I know all the Horizon games to catch up with speed. I don't think you can buy the first two or three Horizon games on Game Pass though. You have to get the discs, which is weird. Either way, Forza's coming, another one, and they announced a bunch of miscellaneous stuff like Grounded's getting an update. Outer Worlds 2, which I only know the first one much. I just know it's made by the available people like. Now, one of the Game Pass things he talked about that somehow makes me interested. You know, no one who watches me knows that I would even care. Fallout 1 and 2 are coming to Game Pass on PC. And this, for me, is kind of important. Because I don't really care about Fallout. It looks grim, boring, dull. But I like retro games. And the first two Fallouts and the first two Elder Scrolls are retro as they can be with hard difficulty, old school graphics, all that stuff. I'm gonna give it a go. And I think I might try Fallout 1, see how far I can get. And if I hate it, I'll quit it. If I don't hate it, then woohoo, I enjoy it. But it's nice to me see how the series all began. Maybe if I become a fan, I'll try Fallout 3, New Vegas, and all the popular ones people like. I do have Skyrim for modding and just crazy messing with the game then wasting dirty hours in the first two hours of the game because you keep corrupting the safe doing random console commands and mods. I don't know, but I guess I see what people mean when they say they get lost in that game. I want to play, uh, not Skyrim 1 and 2, Elder Scrolls 1 and 2 sometime, but they are on Game Pass PC, so I may have to wait a bit longer. Or maybe I'll just buy them on Steam. I think they're even free on the website, I'm not sure. All I know is that they are old and old-fashioned and first-person action games, which is probably not my sort of thing, but if they're retro, shouldn't be too hard. More wins on Xbox, so I can at least do that if I want the first 3D game. But speaking of old school games, Diablo 2 Remastered got shown off, and I don't care about Diablo 
but I love that you can pick the old visual styles. It looks like a fun game. It might have local co-op. So I'm going to buy it on Switch because it's coming to Switch. And I am surprised it has cross save. So even if I buy it on Switch and get it on Xbox later, I can continue where I left off. And that feels amazing. And it's from Activision. Oh my god. I hate this. Activision. At least both the games I care about, the arcade collection and this, are from Blizzard. But your Blizzard is a mess too. And... The arcade collection from Digital Eclipse, which is why I bought it. Uh, either way, it's the point of the devil. Sometimes you have to do mail buy it, use, I don't know. On sale, Diablo 3 is on sale so much, it's ridiculous. I could buy that on Switch anytime I want to, really. But that was Xbox. It was long, lots of games, just a lot of Game Pass stuff. I, too many to list, but I gave the highlights. I thought that was interesting, and uh, nothing major. Sadly, no backwards compatibility expansions. That's what I hoped for, and they did an after show on Thursday, and they did announce the Design Lab came back, which is cool. I can now make my own C from gaming controller, and that sounds epic with so much power in my hands. But besides that, there was nothing I found interesting there, so I'm just going to mention that here. So they had no backwards compatibility updates with missing games like Puzzle Fighter 2 Physical, Street Fighter 2 HD, Decay Games, um, what else? Uh, 1942 Joint Strikes another one, Bionic Commando We Owned Once another one I want added, and a bunch of original Xbox stuff like Blinks 2. That's probably the biggest one because there's Blinks 1. No Blinks 2. What the heck? But... Either way, the lineup they have now will keep me occupied until they do update again, so I have faith in Xbox. They'll bring a nice, good addition of backwards compatibility in the future. So I hope. Up later was Square Enix. Now, on 2019, me and my friend John watched it together in person in Wisconsin, and we had an amazing time. Lots of surprises were announced. We mentioned Saga 3, the new game, Scarlet Grace, I believe it was called. Like, in Final Fantasy VIII Remastered, the 7 Remake, so much great stuff was announced at that conference. It was amazing. It was just so fun. Lots of stuff that I thought would never be shown off was shown off. Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC was shown off. So what would they have to show in the 2021 conference? Would they have the Final Fantasy Collection put the main series, the consoles, finally? So I can play my favorite Final Fantasy 2 anywhere I want to on the go. No, it was probably, it was the only conference I wage quit. The others I wasn't interested in that were bad, I just didn't watch live. But no, this I was watching live, and I got so mad I wage quit. This is easily my least favorite of all the conferences I watched live, and yeah. So it starts off with Guardians of the Galaxy. It was rumored for a while that some company called EDOS Interactive would be making a game based off a Marvel series, which is Guardians of the Galaxy. As I mentioned, and you pretty much hinted that before, I know nothing about Marvel. I only watched Big Hero 6, Spider-Man Homecoming, Infinity War, and Endgame, and tiny bits and pieces of random other movies I'm, that makes me watch on TV, like FX and stuff. So I don't care about Marvel. I only care about them from Marvel Pinball and Moon Knight, because Moon Knight is cool, but they don't make Moon Knight movies, so I don't care. The Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 has Moon Knight, so at least that's a plus in that game's favor. But yeah, I know nothing about Guardians of the Galaxy except that Rocket Raccoon's in there. He's funny. And there was this tree that doesn't say anything besides his own name for some weird reason. So yeah, some action adventure game that's single player, which surprised me after how Avengers was multiplayer and it was a big mess. And I have so many other problems with that game that makes me in, in, impressed on how bad it like, performed. To be fair, this does seem more reasonable. Single player wise, you're playing as main character, some dude named Star Lord. Don't know if he has a real name or not, but he's fighting with these alien guys, and he's going across the universe being a bad guys and stuff. I guess being a bounty hunter. I don't know anything about Guardians of the Galaxy. Just looks, looks kind of fun, interesting. We talked about for twenty minutes, and to be fair, they were showing off gameplay the whole time, and it's coming out in October. So nice little reveal showing, hey, this game is far along. Look how much we've done. But you get tired after a while, and if you're out of the universe like I am, don't know anything about MCU stuff, you're like, my god, stop. And I also noticed right away they don't have the real actors from the movie, so at first I was like, why bother? But then I realized that three of the people in those movies and the universe are like aliens, that they could, they don't need a face actor to play them. They can be voiced by anyone. So I guess it's Star-Lord's likeness that I guess would be the problem. But he wears a mask... 
It's not like the Avengers where you go, oh, that's not Chris Evans, that's not Captain America, that's an imposter. No, I think Guardians of the Galaxy is fine. It seems lower budget anyway. It seems okay. Then afterwards, they announced that they're going to bring talk about two remasters, Final Fantasy and Mana. And I'm like, I am going to be so hyped unless they play the trailer for Final Fantasy, showed six games. The original pixel art with some nice touch-ups from the FF Dots book, which looks really good. For 30 seconds, blurry images, really weird menus with bad text, and then they just cut out and say, coming soon to PC and mobile. Yeah. Six games that were already on mobile and still are as of this video being released on mobile again. I mean, yeah, they remake the old versions, maybe, but why? Why we release six games again on the same platforms? And Steam has four to six and a remake of After Years. That reminds me, though, all these look like After Years, like the 2D one. That's kind of interesting. FF1 2 are the only noteworthy ones, and FF2 is my favorite, so I guess I'll buy it on Steam because it's an individual game. But why aren't these on console, Square? That made me so mad, I literally rage quit the stream. I was like, why did they bother? Why didn't they just show off the release date or more footage of it on mobile or Steam? So I know I'm getting. Where am I getting it? What's going on? I was just confused in like days, very days, mostly days, completely days. So that was a weird mishmash of a conference. Because afterwards, I wage quit. I saw some Edge of Mana stuff. Looks good. Don't care about Edge of Mana. It's a weird town building game. I like the Game Boy one the most still. Uh, but it's a good remaster. And then I hear the talk about Avengers more. And then some weird, edgy Final Fantasy spinoff called Strange of Paradise, I think. And it looks fun gameplay-wise, but the main characters are like the most... Stereotypical hipster dudes I've ever seen, like people jokingly call Final Fantasy USA that's more USA focused than Mystic Quest, and they're not kidding. It's so annoying, but it looks so fun that when it comes to Series X next year, I might as well buy it because there's no Final Fantasy 16 for me to enjoy. At least that. So, yeah, that was Square's pretty bad conference. I wage quit on to Monday. And Monday has some smaller conferences I was interested in. One of them I was interested in as a curiosity was even be a train wreck, and yeah, it was. Here's the tough part. My old nemesis, Intellivision. So the Intellivision, they did, somehow, have a conference at E3. And I'm not talking about Limited One, who has a conference at E3, but they're not on the E3, you know, video schedule. No, they didn't host this on their own Twitch channel. They were on E3's Twitch channel, the same one you watched all I just talked about on, what you'd watch Nintendo on later. They had Intellivision, because Tommy bought ad space on television for the, a 10 minute conference. So to the public masses, the ones they say this is not for you, they unveiled the system again, basically went over everything they talked about again, and they showed off a bunch of weird games that had, again, mobile-looking assets to them that look interesting. I didn't see it live. I was in work, and I didn't want to risk getting fired to see an awful conference. All I can say is that the little stuff I hope they do right, they did not. And stuff I thought would be cool is not cool. And the stuff that is not cool, they doubled down on. First off, the guy talks, like, for three minutes about himself. And, like, I know I talk about, oh, my past, my memories, my memories, eternal memories, unscripted memories. Like, no, it's my memories, my retrospective series, when I talk about my memories. But, like, no, that would be like if I was on someone else's video as a cameo. Hey, I'm Connor, the maker of Seafoam Gaming. I've made so many things over the years, like my review of Mystery Dungeon, my review of this, that, this, that, this, that. You hear Tommy do that, but, like... A stupid long time saying he worked on Metroid Prime, which I don't remember him doing at all. I don't think he made music. Maybe he worked on audio technology. I don't know. But like Metroid Prime, the Roblox oof sound, a bunch of weird stuff. And he just goes on and on and on about, oh, yeah, this is in television. We are back to family friendly gaming. Oh, no, no. It's the same stuff I heard before, I told you about last August, that had weird nerds for both sides, defenders of Intellivision, people who don't like Intellivision, having a war in my comments. So, like before, since it worked very good, I'm not going to tag or even chapter guide this conference. I'll just mark it as a question mark. 
because that's what it is. A question mark of what is this conference? Because you know, like, oh, they're going to show off some more games in the release date, right? Because it's coming out in October because they delayed it again. No, they didn't even show off the release date or mention the price. That's two fifty dollars, by the way, that they already announced ages ago. They just said, oh yeah, look at this cool artwork, and it is cool artwork. I like this old school retro style artwork for the box art, but um. Why show us box art but no gameplay or footage or release date or info? And then he talks about, oh, hey, there's a score chaser. You can get the best score on the leaderboards for the month and we'll email you a certificate. And I was like, oh, that's old fashioned, like Dreamcast, but that's cool. I do if I care about the console. But yeah, it's just the guy for 10 minutes talking, like I do, for 40 minutes. But I'm like, that guy, I at least try to be entertaining and, you know, talk about what's going on. That's why I'm right here. When I'm reading you in my chair, like, a back-and-forth conversation you can listen to while you go about doing, you know, like a podcast, I guess you'd say. Maybe. I don't know. I don't do podcasts yet. Um, but yeah, the television was just boring. They did show Day of East stuff and said they had Burger Time, but they didn't show anything else, so I'm not really believing that. All I know is that the Atari Age cult is still going, still over a thousand pages that weird form. My god. Get a life, people. My God. Stop simping. I can't believe I used that word. But, yeah, stop doing that for a man who won't tell you if it's the day or not when they're supposed to be manufacturing these next month. Two weeks from now, they're supposed to have them start in, you know, building them. And I think it's doomed. It's going to hit 2022 and then die forever. And, yeah, the mainstream press destroyed it. They called it a tax write-off. They called it a Wii U from, like, another dimension. Basically, anything I said, they said, so I'm not going to go any further. But yeah, that was a weird conference. They literally took up ad space, and the most entertaining part of the whole conference was seeing people's reactions to it in the chat and live stream reactions. Because Take-Two had one right afterwards. I didn't care about Take-Two. But those people that came up for Take-Two were like, what is this system? And it led to some amazing memes. But no, that day was, for me, the highlight was Limited One Games. Now, you know I unboxed a bunch of stuff from them. If anything could be a, accused of me shooting for something, I could say Limited 1. But, you know, they've only sent me stuff I won in the past. They haven't always sent me review copies outside digital games for my website. So, I still am honest when I talk about what I think of the conference and, you know, the games. If I say something's bad, it's bad. Vice versa. I'm transparent. Ask me anything. Like always. I was not able to see this live, but I did get home and watch it the moment I was home, so I at least saw it blind, which, you know, was good. And they announced a bunch of interesting stuff, but nothing I'd say is groundbreaking except for one item that I'm going to talk about a bit, but I'm going to skip over it. Basically, not a bunch of games, just, you know, some interesting old games like Haven's one of them. It's coming out soon physically. Takeover, which was hinted at in a newsletter. It's published by Dangan though, and I don't like them because they stole my friend's game. But they got back. It's a big mess. It's, yeah. Devil Engine will never escape hell, I swear to God. Even if it escapes Dangan, it goes into another hell. Um. Anyways, yeah. Still, it looks like a great game. I do think it's a Pelican team needs to get like, support because he got screwed by Nykatis, who's way worse. So I do begrudgingly say buy takeover if you can digitally physically it's a good beam up i hear as not my caddis and they still was racing games they don't release it after like seven years my god um so that that's a good get kunio and double dragon now here's where i will complain the lrg so i can basically you know like i say i'm brutally honest and if they mess up or i think they did something stupid i'm gonna say it and this is stupid so Kunio Kun and Double Dragon Brawler Bundle is a collection of some amazing retro NES games, but all the Japanese ones are translated into English, and even the ones that we got in the United States, like Renegade, will we translate into English from scratch, so you can compare the US one and the Japanese one translated. And it's a really darn good assortment of games, and it's a really good collection. It's preserving retro games in a nice, amazing way. And I'm like, oh my god, this is a great deal. And it came to PS4 and Switch. I got a review copy of Switch, reviewed it, loved it. Was waiting for a PS4 physical ever since. We got physical announcement only on Switch. I don't know why. Most of the games like After Party that don't even make sense to be on PS4 physically 
on PS4, and they didn't give Double Dragon Kunio a physical on PS4, you know it exists. That baffles me. I just want to buy it on PS4, even if it's a limited print, it's not pre-order because it doesn't do well. Like, my god, I just want really badly to play these old Kunio games on the disc. Even though I do like it on the Switch, but like, they had a great announcement, and then they just shoot themselves in the foot by not releasing it on one of the systems that's done digitally? Why? I can only assume Ark maybe has something to do with it, but either way, please fix that and release it. Even if it's like months down the line, I'll buy it, I beg of you, release it for PS4 physically. Why ignore PS4 people? We exist. Even if we have a Switch, the PS4 is still better in most cases. But anyways, there was that game, then they announced River City Goes 2, which is another Kunio game. Just announced they're doing a physical and it's coming to digital next year. Okay. But the biggest one to me is River City Girls Zero, which is a Super Nintendo game that was the basis for River City Girls. Translate for the first time ever with some quality of life stuff, new cutscenes, some nice tie-ins to the main game. It's basically making it into the canon of River City Girls, which is amazing because it's basically taking an old game and making a new game, but also an old game. So I'm very excited for that. It's coming to Switch and other systems later, so I'm hoping, hoping, hoping to get a physical of that, and even just a download. I'll, I'll buy it anywhere, really. But yeah, River City Girls is coming soon, 2 and 0, so I'm excited for that. And then they announced Castlevania Requiem. I have it on PS4, I platinumed it, I don't need it to make a cool collector's edition. But needless to say, it's a good compilation. It's based off the PSP ports of Wando and Symphony. They are both great ports. Wando's a bit iffy, but Symphony is probably the best version of it because it has more characters, better translation, better voice acting, better everything. So, yeah, buy Requiem if you don't have it already. It's a good compilation. But for those who think the Wando of Blood port's a bit buggy or weird because of the weird voice acting, they did something that made me happy, and if I saw it live, I would have screamed. The biggest announcement for me at the whole show. And so far, the E3, Wando of Blood is getting a physical English CD on a TurboGrafx-16. That means something I'm going to repeat. The TurboGrafx-16 is getting a new, licensed, official CD game, Wando of Blood, in English, dubbed and subbed. It's coming soon, and I'll buy it day one. I have a Turbo Graphics, not a CD. Even if it takes me ages to get a dual R or a CDR or a CD add-on that works. Even if it takes me, I have to burn it to my computer or something. I will buy that and use that disc somehow. Because, holy crap, as a Turbo Graphics fanatic, that's basically been my dream for years to see Turbo Graphics games reprinted officially instead of that crap that PCE works loses where they steal people's translations and stuff. No, no. This is the real deal. It's going to probably have an epic collector's edition. And I am so hyped. Turbo Graphics lives. Sad that mean, the Mini is you know, has glitches with the USB ports and it flies. But hey, if you don't want to worry about burning the USB Mini, the Turbo Graphics Mini, while plugging it in, you can buy the real system and just play it on the old school days. Or well, if that Poly Mega ever comes out, play on that. Or they probably stole the money and ran. But yeah, that's a hype announcement, and then they end the show with another announcement of Contra Anniversary Collection. I'm going to get that, because I'm going to get the Castlevania one next week. And then they end it with, of course, one I did get a hint about a few months ago, so I can't say I'm surprised, but... The 3D old game Plumbers Don't Wear Ties is getting an HD remaster. And I am so curious to see how they remaster with all that weird nudity and adult content. It's like the most... YouTube poop game that ever exists and it's amazing and off at the same time. And part of the meme is that the audio is all compressed like a Nintendo 64 game multiple times. So everyone sounds like they were in a tin can. And they say they're gonna fix that, which is great. But I kinda want them to have an option to just make everyone sound like crap for the fun, funny ha ha value. So I'm curious and I hope to God we hear a story because they bought the IP. Limited One bought the IP to that game. So I'm really curious to see how they got it, why the game exists to begin with, what the actors think. I want to see all that in the behind-the-scenes knick-knack. So that's cool. That's really cool. So yeah, Limited One Games E3 wasn't as big as previous years for me, but Wando of Blood on Turbo CD. Huge announcement. Worthwhile. Must have. Don't need to say any more. 
So finally is the conference that I have the most feelings about, the one that I had the most bad feelings about first, and the one I have a funny story to share. So I, I mentioned that I was at work and you know for television, I obviously want to watch a bad conference live because I get fired, I joked about. Well, I didn't want to watch Nintendo Live for the same reason, but I did have a lunch break after the conference. So my idea was I'd go on lunch break, watch the conference, and basically see it at my work and just enjoy myself. The trials I'd have to do that were, oh my god, a mess. So basically, I went to the lunchroom, I ate, and then after I finished eating, I watched the conference. But because the VOD is not live and I don't want to get spoiled, I go to the E3 conference, get spoiled on one game in it, that's no big deal to me. And then I rewind all the way to when they show off to start the direct, and then it stutters, and my Wi-Fi and cell service die because there was an outage at my work that time, which convenient as heck. Um... So I go outside and eat the better outside would make it better because that's how it normally works when I have Pokemon Go problems. No, outside at full bars it still lags and it drops to 144p. So I watched the whole direct in 144p blind. Everything looks like ass. It runs at 30 frames per second and I thought, as dumb as this may sound, that some of the games announced were literally that resolution and frame rate because I just didn't realize it changed resolution right away. So it made me so mad and disgusted because some of the games I saw there would be awful on that frame rate and resolution. And some of the games they announced weren't what I was hoping for, so big mixed bag. But it got better. So to start off with the good, Kazula from Tekken. I only played Tekken 6, don't know much about it. I only know what the whole point of throwing people off the cliff was about. All I know is that it's a cool character of cool music from a great Japanese iconic fighting series. Arcade fighters and arcade opponents in Smash Bros. I'd like to see more of. I wish it was Virtual Fighter, but still good get. I'm hoping the final DLC guy is like the ultimate god of something. Like, I don't know. I really don't know. It could be overweight like Kino. It could be some dumb like Master Chief. It could be a supporting a bad company like Crash Bandicoot. Or it could be a literal meme like Waluigi or Master Chief again. So either way, it was a good Smash pick, and I'm not upset. I'm mean, looking forward to the 28th or 29th where they'll talk more about Kazuda and hopefully say he's out that same day or in mid-July. I don't know. I'm excited to play as him for like 10 minutes before I realized there's no single-player mode anymore for me to take on, so I just quit because I don't play with friends. Unless they come over, which doesn't happen much. But either way, good character. Still not sure how I'm going to use him or where I'm going to use him, though. But after that, they had talked about some other games. I'm going to get these out all the more likely, so forgive me. But one of the things I remember was Monkey Ball Banana Mania, a compilation of levels from Monkey Ball 1, 2, and Deluxe, which is just the first three games by Amusement Vision, remastered in the Banana Brits HD style. And it looks fun. I'm going to get it. Watching Monkey Ball 1 and 2 for a while now. Though as well as the sounds, I don't think even though it's a remaster, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of the plasticky, bright, colorful look to it. And I kind of prefer the weird N64-like graphics the original had, where everything was like weird and goofy looking, like the shading. It, you've got to see the original Monkey Balls and know what I'm talking about. They look distinct and dark, while this looks bright, colorful, and happy, and it's a bit of a tone shift I'm not uh, still not a fan of in the series, but it looks fun. Gameplay's what matters, so I'm going to check it out. Oh, I got an Xbox pre-order for it. Then they announced Mario Party Superstars, which is the game I got spoiled on in a thumbnail because I was going to E3 through YouTube's app. And luckily, I don't care about Mario Party. It's just boards from N64 games. Never played Mario Party 3. Hoping most boards are from 3 so I can use it as an excuse to play those boards. But main games are from across the series, so hopefully my favorites from 5 and 6, the ones I like the most, will be in. Because 5 mini games are just so fun, in my opinion. Then they announced WarioWare, a new WarioWare for Switch. And at first, because, you know, this is at my work cell service, 144p. And with me also having to mute the microphone because, you know, I'm outside and I don't want people to hear my internal direct while they walk by me. I think it's a Royal World Gold port at first. I literally think it's just Royal World Gold, but you play as the characters in the mini games, and you can play co-op. And it's like, wow, this sucks. They just ported the game lazily. That's dumb. And then you know, moving on, they talk about another game, 
which is Metroid Dread, and this should be normally, uh, oh my god, they finally made a true Metroid game after 19 years, this is so hype, I'm excited, They're ending the cliffhanger, it's so epic looking. No, at work I died, it was all a CG cutscene that was playing, including the gameplay bit, because, again, 144p, p, 30 FPS, and speaking of which, 30 FPS for this game looks horrendous, so I was very negative about the game when I first saw it, and I was like, my god, it looks ugly. Then it was called Metroid Dread, and I was like, okay, that's that meme name from years ago, and I didn't hear of it either. So yeah, I didn't have much of a good reaction to Metroid, at least at first. And then they announced, let's see, I think they announced Advance Wars next. And this was a big one for me, because I was like, oh my god, it's a new Advance Wars. And I saw it was the first two games, I was like, damn, I just beat the first two games in the Wii U. I was like, I want them to make a new game, but it looks so good, I'm going to buy it anyway if there's multiplayer. Because for me, pass and play multiplayer was the best part of Advance Wars in the Wii U. It's just a perfect multiplayer game. And if it had online, that'd be amazing. They didn't say in the direct, but they did say stuff at the direct that made me like, Oh my god, why didn't they say this in the direct? This game is so hype now! But we are not in the end of the direct, we still have more talk about, like, the party stuff, like Ding and Wampa. I have a fully old review code of Ding and Wampa V3 I redeemed, I need a complete and review. So I feel like I'm even more time crunched to review the PS4 V3 before the Switch V3 comes out. And there was this new board game mode that's also available, and it's coming in the physical compilation that I'll probably get because Donkey Kong Wampa 1 is one of my favorite games of all time. Which you probably never expected me to say, but it's really damn good. Like, seriously, it blew me off guard. Even the second game was kind of stale at that point for me. And the third didn't hold my interest long, which is why I didn't get to reviewing it. I still haven't seen anime. Either way, it's really intriguing, and it's a nice series you should probably try out. Especially since they don't have that god-awful third-person action game that's Ultra the Spirit Girls that you do not want to play as a first entry in the series. I made that mistake. I never recovered. Then they announced stuff like Tony Hawk, Just Dance, but games don't care about, some interesting indie games. And I'm trying to remember if there's any extras I'm thinking of that I may need to look at. They announced cool Amiibo, the Metroid ones. Um, let's see. September they announced. Yeah, I got September, October, Nove November. Shin Megami Tensei 5. That's the game. The last game I'm forgetting. I still need to beat 1 and 2 on the Switch. And then get 3. And maybe get 4 for 3DS. And beat Strange Journey. I'm not close to playing 5, it has any connection to anything, but the battle system looks a lot like Tokyo Mirage, which I also need to beat, so as you can tell, I'm in the backlog hell, so I don't want to buy 5 until I beat all that, let alone review it, my god, if I review that game, I won't get it done for a year, so I'm not going to even ask for a review code. Needless to say, I'm excited, so I'm hoping to give it a go and see, hey, this should be interesting, very interesting to say the least. So let me think, is that all Nintendo had a show? Mm. Well, besides the end, which I'm gonna get to if I don't... Oh yeah, they talked about Cruisin' Blast, which is that arcade game I've seen a few times, it looks okay. They're pointing at the Switch! I like Cruisin' USA or World, it's the one you can go to the shopping mall, one over people. In the arcades, I found that so funny as a kid. I want to play that one again, but that's not that one. It's some weird game with dinosaurs and stuff for some reason, but maybe it's fun or maybe it's not fun. I don't know. All I know is that it's a weird Nintendo IP they don't use anymore except in the arcade, so to see it back on the console is surprising to me. But yeah, that's mostly Nintendo's E3, except for the part that disappointed me the most legitimately even after the conference and the 144p mess I had, Zelda parts. They showed off Skyward Sword, and no quality of life mentioned at all except the Amiibo, which is already a bit of a weird choice to begin with. They finally make an Amiibo useful, but don't add other quality of life features to offset the Amiibo, so I'm like, why bother? And the original game is a great game, but it's marred by linearity and bad replay values and just good combat but boring exploration, and good dungeons and good bosses but boring overworld, so I'm like, I don't want to play this. This game's dumb. I, you be at once, never again. Never again. And if they aren't going to fix it, I'm not going to play it. They fixed the motion control nonsense, but that's about it. So that's one thing they talked about. And then they said, oh yeah, we don't have any else 
plan for the 35th anniversary, she was like, oh my god. Because that, there was a rumor that said Twilight Princess HD and Wind Waker were going to come out, and I was like, oh god, yes, I skipped Twilight Princess because it was a dumb remaster. They barely changed anything and had the Wolf Inc. dungeon. But Wind Waker, they changed so much, and it was a favorite game of mine going up. I want to play it again. I left on the Wii U, I just replay on the Wii U. I want to play on the go. And this guy said, oh, yeah, it's Queen this Leah, I promise. And it didn't come to Leah. I find the idea of Wii U ports getting the lady to be laughable and stupid, so I don't buy that they were happening at all, and they are either always planned for 2022, or they don't exist. Either way, they disappoint me. Though they did announce them that at least is a novelty I'll get into. The Zelda Game & Watch, which doesn't have Zelda Game & Watch on it, but we have a Vermin, which makes no sense, because why don't they have the Zelda name Game & Watch on it? They did the same thing with the Mario one, where they put Ball instead of Super Mario Brothers, like, why? Besides iconicness, I guess, but like, unlike the Mario 1, they put all oh, Mario 1 and 2, but not 3 old USA. No, they just put Zelda 1, 2, and Link's Awakening on there. They put all the good 2D ones that can fit on it. They put the NES one that's good, the, the sequel that's good, the Famicom disc versions that are good, and the Game Boy one that's never been re-released outside the DX version. So I can play it with all the fun sequence break bugs intact, which is amazing for me. So I pre-ordered one instantly, and then they announced a new trailer for Breath of the Wild 2. Don't even like the first one, I'm willing to give it a shot, watch it, it looks interesting, has good music, but I don't need to be an actual game. It's like the trailer for the first game where it had amazing music, and then the actual game had nothing. And then they show maybe Zelda, but I don't know if they're doing a dumb fake out again. Just let me play as Zelda, because it'd be cool. Both Zelda and Link teaming up, that'd be nice. I I, need, I would be cool. Though I also need to play Hyrule Warriors, which we also talked about as DLC. I think you can play as a Guardian, but I don't know if it's a mode or a character to play as in levels. I really don't know. Not getting that game until there's a Switch Pro, or at least you know, a sale. And that was it. 2022, as expected. It's probably going to be late 2022. Um, and yeah, that's the Direct. That was Nintendo's Direct and all of E3. So what did I think of E3 as a whole? Well, let's find out. So E3 2021. What did I think of it? Uh, that was honestly kind of bad. Like, I didn't even mention Capcom or Namco that basically showed nothing new or noteworthy. Um, most of the stuff that they talked about was stuff that we known of years ago or that are coming out soon, which is good because I want to hear more about stuff coming out soon than stuff I don't know about playing two years or eight years. Like, that's why I hated the PS5 conference last year because they didn't date so much shit. And now we know, oh yeah, Ratchet and Clank's coming out literally last week as of my video. And then they were like, for nobody, oh yeah, God was totally distantly announced, like, oh, 2022. And I was like, why do you say 2021? Just say two, well, that's probably why, because of people like me, if I may be broad. Just say 2022. I don't know. Game development's hard, especially with a pandemic. You can't wait on a state that. But it's still weird, and a lot of announcements are kind of meh. And I find Nintendo's was the best, because it's, of course, near-term stuff, mostly. And Limited 1 was my second favorite. Not just a bias, but because of the announcements being more varied and interesting. Followed by Xbox, which was really good, even if it was mostly for a different kind of market that's not me. Still lots of interesting games I think is cool to, you know, check out for you guys. Think you guys would like their games. And then, uh, nothing else I watched would be after that. And Television and Square Enix are both equally bad. Yes, I just said it. They are both bad. Capcom and Namco didn't show off anything new. And for most part, oh, that yeah, Ubisoft gets to be fourth place, um... But yeah, E3 kind of sucked, but still better have everything in one week compared to the last video sporadic scattering of everything that made it a mess for me and everyone else. So I hope it continues, but the ESA is kind of still sketchy. I don't like them. I think they suck at wanting E3. We just need some sort of change up, man. But still, I was okay, you know, wasn't that good. And I have at least some stuff to look forward to. Though, funnily enough, my favorite game wasn't announced at E3, but we have at some Game Fest, like in March, and it was Brass the Master Zero 3 that comes out one month from now. I'm giga hyped. I hope it's going to be an amazing game. And I'm so excited to hopefully review it, or at least play it, or both, because I'm going to buy it only on every single system ever it comes out on by the time I'm done with this 
well not video it's not out yet unless i take too long to release this video but by the time of maybe the physical release shipping to me i'll have every other version downloaded because it's just such a fun looking game i love the series and i i can't wait to talk about eternal memories i just need to film it and catch up on other to do stuff like the mystery dungeon retrospective oh yeah there was pokemon unite news too comes out next month on switch september on mobile no xenophobia this time from the Pokemon fans, which is nice because you can get mad at Tencent being shady about saying, oh, it's the the, the populist doing it. Like, some of the reactions I saw the Pokemon Unite as, you were really, uh, very insensitive and kind of bad, like, to say the least. I'm at least glad people, if they don't care about it, are like, oh, good, let's just ignore it. That's how you should do it. Meanwhile, I'm hoping that Mystery Dungeon 2 DX comes out and is real and won't be a copy paste the first game like the X one was with no music upgrades. Give us those HD anime cutscenes and orchestrated music, Chunsoft. Anyways, I'll see you next time when I talk about the anime retrospective and hopefully Magician Lord soon. Bye. <laughs>